Okay, so now let's actually kind of bef before we actually sit down and do the code, let's walk through our algorithm here for get. Get with an array list was super easy. It was just like a single line of code with a linked list that's going to give us more trouble. So let's see what we actually have to do. Um, now, this example uses a slightly different uh, array list implementation that has an add to front method. Our method is just add, but it makes sure that the index is zero. So it's really the same thing. Um, so what we're trying to do is write this get method. And again, when we did array lists, this was super, super, super easy. With a linked list, it's not as easy, right? Because like, where is stuff? All I know is where the first item in the list is, that start reference. I don't know anything else. Um, okay, so let's see how we're going to do this. So I'm going to build a list here by calling, and again, uh, in, in our new code, we're going to call add, but you can also imagine that I just initialized this list from an array. So it initially contains the items three, two, one. So now the question is, if I get a call to get, so get is supposed to return the item that's at that index. How do I do this? The only thing I know in this list, the only thing the list knows is where the first item is. But here's our algorithm, right? If I know where the first item is, I can find every other item. I just have to go one at a time. So I use that start reference to find the first item. That's the item three, okay? And I'm, I'm also keeping the counter as I go. So the counter helps me figure out where I am. So the counter is currently zero. I'm at the first item, okay. So I know I'm at item with index zero. The next thing I do is I follow its next reference. So its next reference takes me to the item with value two and I increment the counter. So now I'm at the second item in the list with index one. Just keep doing this. I've got a loop here. We're gonna show you how to set up that loop, but this is a loop. I'm just following one reference to the next reference to the next reference. And I do that until I find the item that I'm looking for or until I get to a null. Uh, the null means that I've reached the end of the list. If we maintain the size of the list properly, we don't have to do this because we can check the index before we start. Uh, if we don't, so you know, if you maintain the size separately, you can check the index before you start. If you don't, you have to walk the list. At some point, so in this case, I get to, so now I started at start, that was zero. Then I walked forward one using next, got to another item, that was one, used its next reference to get to the next item. That's the item with value two, with index two, excuse me, index two the third item in the list. And now I return its value, okay? That's the other thing I wanna point out. I would return the value one, because you asked me, what did I put in the list in the third position? And the answer is, you put an item, or what's currently at, at the third position in the list? The answer is uh, something with the value one. So again, let's walk this through. So I know where the start is, and I'm trying to find the third element. And I just repeat this process. I use the start to find the first item, I use that item's next reference to find the next item. I use that item's next reference to find the next item. And I keep doing this and I'm counting as I go. So I know where I am in the list. When I get to the spot I was looking for, now I can return the value at that location. Cool, let's implement.